Even the most die-hard NASA stan has to admit the Martian surface is a pretty dry subject. But what if we told you NASA's new Perseverance rover has already made startling discoveries involving a harbour seal, the Wright brothers' airplane, and the merits of rigorous personal hygiene? Join us today as we prove how much this dead planet rocks and learn what has been found on Mars so far. NASA's Mars 2020 mission is all about seeking traces of the microbial life scientists think might have existed some 3 billion years ago, when conditions on Mars were probably very similar to those on Earth. If successful, technical insights gained on this mission will also help pave the way for future manned adventures to the Red Planet. At the time of writing, the rover has been on the surface for less than 100 days, but plenty has been discovered nevertheless. For one, vital proof-of-concept data was collected from the very landing process itself. The mission's all-new terrain relative navigation used innovative onboard mapping, cross-referencing input from the craft's onboard cameras to help pinpoint the Perseverance landing zone to within a few meters. No small feat when even a minor overshoot would have landed the rover in trouble. Weeks of hard driving from where it needs to be. And this data will prove invaluable to future sorties. Three types of sensors, thermocouples, heat flux sensors and pressure transducers were deployed during entry and landing, collecting data on the temperatures and outside pressure before and after that iconic parachute was deployed. One potentially key discovery was that every last thermocouple survived the landing intact, suggesting heat shield damage was minimal. And as thermocouples are by no means mission critical, it follows that future landers could maybe get by with thinner heat shields, saving all important weight. Safely deposited on the Martian surface, Perseverance has since been doing exactly what we'd all be doing in its position, blasting rocks with its awesome space laser. You'll have seen in those photos sent back from the Red Planet that the rover's new Jezero crater home is studded with light-coloured rocks peering out from a landscape of russet-coloured soil. Well, some of those rocks have been singled out for space attention by arguably the coolest man-made device ever sent into space, the Perseverance Supercam. The Supercam rocks up to its target stone and fires a tiny pinpoint laser, accurate up to 7 meters away. When that powerful beam strikes the rock, it sends up a brief superheated cloud of plasma, comprising free-floating ions and electrons. Perseverance's onboard spectrograph reads the short plasma signature and can identify the chemical composition of the rock. Two particular rocks scientists have identified as worthy of the Supercam treatment have been nicknamed Mars and Yigo. They're both words from the Navajo dialect, by the way, coined by Aaron Yazzi, a NASA engineer and proud Navajo Nation member. Anyway, it turns out that Mars, which means Mars, and Yigo, meaning diligent, are basalt-like in composition. So they're igneous, as in they've come from a volcano. But crucially, it seems they were moulded into their present shape amid some long-gone watery environment. Proof, if it were needed, that Mars wasn't always such a dry topic. Another noteworthy rock perseverance has poured over is nicknamed the Harbour Seal. Dark and smooth, NASA believes it was sculpted into a sinuous likeness of that playful marine carnivore by the natural erosion of powerful northwesterly winds. This finding supports existing weather modelling of the Martian atmosphere, so counts as a valid and useful data point for researchers, as well as being darn cute. Supercam's Super Duper Laser doesn't only furnish perseverance with visual clues for the mineral composition of rocks. Oh no! The very sound of its zapping sci-fi laser also offers sonic clues to the maker up of stones. Indeed, one of the most groundbreaking aspects of this mission so far is that it's enabled anybody back home on Earth to listen in on the Martian landscape, thanks to Perseverance's onboard battery of microphones. In addition to the pew-pew of that laser, an audio track also dropped on NASA's SoundCloud of the rover's heavy metal wheels clanging and banging across the hard, rocking Martian terrain. Not to mention the eerie ambient susurration of the extraterrestrial winds, available to anybody who wants to hear it online. Magic, really. Even more magical, Perseverance's marvellous MOXIE unit has performed nothing short of alchemy, transforming base CO2 into life-giving oxygen. MOXIE, which stands for Mars Oxygen In Situ Resource Utilization Experiment, since you ask, is a gold-plated gizmo roughly the size of a car battery. It works by diffusing atmospheric CO2 through a non-porous disk of yttria-stabilized zirconia, or YSZ, sandwiched between two porous electrodes. And on April the 20th, it produced a modest but nonetheless historic 5 grams of oxygen. That works out at around 10 minutes worth of breathable air. MOXIE isn't just the first instrument to produce oxygen on another world, paving the way for humanity to literally colonize the universe. It's also the very first device of its kind to help future missions live off the land, harnessing elements of another world's environment for fuel. This is known by fancy engineering types as in situ resource utilization. That basically means using local CO2 to make oxygen to then make rocket propellant, which is a much bigger job than plain old breathable air. In order to create enough 
fuel to launch, say, four astronauts off the Martian surface, a future mission would require approximately 15,000 pounds, or 7 metric tons, of rocket fuel and 25 metric tons of oxygen. That's obviously way too much to carry from Earth. By contrast, those four astronauts would only need around one metric ton between them for breathing. And MOXIE has proved that can certainly be done by a larger descendant unit anyway. A breathtaking, historic first. Of course, the most eye-catching wheeze on this mission so far has been the successful deployment of NASA's $80 million Ingenuity helicopter. Affectionately named Ginny, if you think that's cute, wait till you learn Perseverance is nicknamed Percy, this diminutive chopper only last month cemented its place in the annals of science by performing the first powered flight on another world. And the very fact it survived the trip at all is a miracle. If Ingenuity would have crashed after the very first flight, we would still have met a couple of huge milestones, one NASA technician told fans on Reddit. Surviving launch, charging while en route, surviving the entry, descent and landing, also deploying from the rover and surviving the cold Martian night, these are no small tasks. Certainly making an airworthy vehicle that's dinky enough to be stowed on an interplanetary rover is an amazing achievement and paves the way for future missions exploring areas unsuitable for rovers. As we speak, engineers are greedily collecting data from this one-of-a-kind thin air copter to be used in the design of smart micro drones, or drones that fly at high altitude for applications here on Earth. One particularly arresting scientific observation concerned the solar panels mounted near Ginny's rotor blades. Engineers spent a long time figuring if there was some way of mitigating the inevitable coating of Mars dust the panels would attract, and lose power in doing so. Various solutions, like mini windscreen wipers, were pitched and rejected on the basis they'd add too much complexity and weight. But when those dual rotors started spinning, technicians noticed Ginny's solar output actually increased by a couple of percentage points. Engineers have speculated this is because airflow from the blades self-cleaned Ginny's dusty solar panels. Hygiene matters, even on Mars. Ginny is also carrying a very special payload, a postage stamp sized square of fabric that was once part of the Wright brothers' historic 1903 flying plane was carefully attached to the craft, a tribute to the real aviation OGs. It's still up there now. Before we get carried away with how adorable that is, Mimi Aung, NASA's Ingenuity Program Manager, had this to say. We've been thinking so long about having our Wright Brothers moment, she said modestly. We will take a moment to celebrate our success and then take a cue from Orville and Wilbur regarding what to do next. So what did the Wright Brothers do next? History shows they got back to work, learning as much as they could about their new aircraft. Onwards and upwards then. What do you think? Are these breakthroughs worth the insane budget? Or will we only be satisfied when Ginny sends back a selfie with a little green man? Let us know in the comments. And don't forget to hit subscribe for more high-flying tech content.